Matthew chapter 7, beginning with verse 15, says, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have prophesied in thy name, and in thy name I have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. I want to talk to you about a uh, simple thought this morning, a wise builder, a wise builder. Now, you know, to, there are several things that you have to do when you, or you have to consider when you start to build a house. The first thing, you know, uh, Jesus said, what man goeth out to be on the tower and set it not down first and count the cost to make sure that he have sufficient uh, to do it. You know, the first thing I, I think of is you got to have the price. The price has got to be paid. Well, that was done 2,000 years ago with Calvary. The price was paid so that you and I could build a foundation on the rock. And that rock was Jesus. He said, upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against, uh, against it. You know, uh, Jesus come back here then, and he began to tell, he began to uh, uh, talk to the folks here, and he was uh, telling them some things that would help them in life if they would listen to him. He first started out uh, uh, about talking about a tree, a tree that uh, bring forth, uh, he said a good tree couldn't bring forth evil fruit, neither could an evil tree bring forth good fruit. He went on down, and then he got in uh, to uh, building a house, a house that will stand. And he wasn't talking about just going out here and building a house, but he was talking about a house that had stand the test of time. A spiritual Amen. house that had stand the test of time. And I thought about uh, just some things that was essential uh, to building it. First, you've got to have a good site, a good location. When you find that location, uh, then you can start out to build the house of God. Now, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, every one of us have a good location, and that's right here in the heart. Uh, if, uh, you can't build it 
out here in the flesh, but you got to get down in the heart to build a relationship with Christ. There's too many people today that are trying to build in a place that they can't build, and that's in this fleshly body. You can't get good enough to serve God. You can't get good enough to go to heaven. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of works, lest any man should boast. But it's a gift of God. And a lot of people can't just, just cannot comprehend that God freely gives salvation. And it's not done through the flesh, but it starts out in the heart. You've got to get it started way down in here. And if you can't get it started down in here, you ain't going to get it started. For with the heart, a man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, a confession is made unto salvation. Many times I've thought about and I've told here about old Brian Free and uh, how uh, that he sung for years and years and years, went around singing all over the country. And what a talent Brian Free had. Uh, but Susan and I were uh, listening to him one night and uh, uh, he gave his testimony. And uh, he made the statement, he said, you know, uh, for many years uh, I had head knowledge of Christ. Uh, I went around and I sung the gospel all over. Uh, but he said one night uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the spirit of God convicted my heart uh, and I knew that I was lost and I fell in an altar of prayer uh, and he said now I don't have head knowledge uh, I've got heart knowledge uh, uh, for the first time uh, uh, Brian Free realized what it was like uh, and he found a place to build uh, oh you got to get the place uh, and it's got to be down here uh, in the heart of man uh, it can't be the outward man that builds it. Amen. We've got too many people today. They're going through the motions. You wonder why, folks, you can't get them in church anymore. I'll tell you why. Because most of them going through a motion. Amen. They're trying to serve Christ Amen. outwardly. And they're not serving him inwardly. Amen. It's got to start in here. And then it'll work out here. Amen. And if it don't start here, it ain't going to come out here. And I'm going to tell you something else. You can't make yourself live right if you hadn't been saved by the grace of God. Amen. Now, so you got to start with a good place. And then you've got to have a sure foundation. You know, anybody that's going to build a house will tell you that the first thing you've got to do when you start to build that house is you've got to dig that foot and you've got to get that footing down on a good foundation. If you don't, that house will never, it'll shift, it'll settle, it'll sink, it'll crack, it'll fall. It will not work if it's not on a good foundation. Jesus is that foundation that we've got to build on. I'm going to tell you something. If you build it on anything else, it ain't going to work, folks. If you're trying to build on something other than Jesus, it ain't going to work. I've seen I've seen folks that, listen, uh, I, I want you to love me, but I don't want you to have a preach of religion. Amen. Now, there's a lot of folks try to build their lives on some preacher. Right. They follow him around everywhere he goes. and Oh, they, uh, they think he's the grandest thing since Brute and Snuff. But I'm going <laughs> to tell you something. They ain't no man that can get you to heaven. You gotta build it on Jesus. I love you and I try to preach the gospel to you every Sunday here. But I'm gonna tell you something. Don't hang on to me expecting me to take you with me because I got just enough for old Stanley. I, I can't take you with me. I can't even take Susie as much as I love her. I can't even take her. Don't hold on to my coattail. I can't get you there. Hang on to Jesus, one that loves you, one that gave his life on Calvary for you, one that rose the third day so you can have victory in your life. He's the one you need to build your life on and build your foundation on. And if you'll build on that, you'll have a house that'll stand. Amen. You see, 
see these folks that come in. And used to, we had folks that every year at revival season, you'd see them in the hall. About three weeks after the revival was over, he was back out doing the right. same junk they had done before. Yeah. They, called, they called them two-week wonders. Right. I said some of them had a convulsion instead of a conversion. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. When you get down, now first of all, and I want you to hear this, you got folks going around telling us saying today that you can get saved anytime you want to. Hogwash. You can't. That's right. Man. You don't choose the time. Amen. The Lord chooses the time. Right. And when the Holy Spirit of God speaks to your heart, then you can be saved. Mm -hmm. You can come to this altar every day. If God's not speaking to your heart, you're not going to be saved. But when that Holy Ghost conviction comes, yeah. and the, uh, you uh, feel that precious Holy Spirit of God speaking to that old heart and saying, I love you, and I want to see you saved. And you know what? Jesus died for you. Oh, hey. and when, that, when you begin to hear hey. that, that sweet, still, small voice speaking to that heart, then it's time to come, folks. Now I'm telling you, if you'll come then, and you'll come with a broken heart, let me tell you something, folks. You gotta first get lost before you can get saved. Right. I've said this a million times. You know the hardest people in the world to get saved are good, everyday folks that don't bother nobody, that or hard-working people that take care of their families, that go out and do what they're supposed to do and don't break the law and they try to live uh, as good as they can, they're the hardest ones to reach. That old drunkard out there, he knows he ain't no count. That drug addict knows they ain't no count. They realize that they're lost. But that good man and that good woman, let me tell you something. The Bible said there is not good. No, not one. And just being good won't get you to heaven. But you've got to come when the Holy Spirit deals with your heart. Hey. When you build that house, on that foundation, then you'll have a house that'll stand the test of time. Oh, listen, you wonder why, folks, you can't get them in church. I'll tell you why you can't. They have not had a heartfelt experience with Christ. If they had, you couldn't keep them out of them doors right there. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. I played church a, lot, a long time in my life. And I'm going to tell you something. When God convicted my heart and saved me, he changed me. I'm a new creature in Christ. Amen. What did he say? For the former things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. Well, preacher, does that mean that I won't never be tempted no more? No, that don't mean that. What it means is, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. What it means is that we got the grace of God to help us through those convicting, trying times in our life. There's not a one of us in this house that Satan don't come at every day with something. I'm going to tell you something. If he don't come at you, then it's a pretty good sign there that you're already where he wants you. And if he, <laughs> if he, you say, well, he don't, Worry me no more. Have you thought you may not be worrying him no more? <laughs> when he ain't worrying you, you ain't worrying him. There ain't a day of my life that Satan don't come at me in some form or in one form or another. I'm going to tell you something. I like it when he does because I know I'm worrying him when he's coming and he's trying 
to, to get me to sidetrack to go one way. Leon, let me tell you something, honey, you can go to school. You ain't seen no temptation yet, what you gonna see when you get to college. I'm gonna tell you something. Those folks there that don't care how your life goes from this point on. And all they're there for is their selfish motives. They're gonna try to introduce you to drugs. They're gonna try to introduce you to a lot of things. But I'm gonna tell you something, honey. Take that old King James Version Bible with you. And when the devil comes at you, you just show him that Bible and you tell him, hey, I don't want your junk. I got my own scripture that I, my own book that I read. And I got my guidelines that I go by. And I, hey, listen, I'm a good girl and I'm going to stay a good girl. And uh, when I get home, my, my mama's going to be proud of me because I come got an education and I hung on to my beliefs and I hung on to my Savior. And I, when I I guarantee you, when you get my age, you'll look back and you'll say, you know, that old preacher was right. He tried to tell me what was right. I know it sounds old folky in this day that we're living in, today, but they still ain't nothing wrong with being a good girl. Amen. Amen. We try to build on a lot of things. But I want to tell you something else. And this is the last point I want to make. And uh, if you go out there to build a house and you don't have the knowledge of how to build that house, you're in a mess. <laughs> you know, I, I used to do construction. I never could cut steps. I'd always have to get Wayne to cut steps out. Then Susie went, we, I built a deck. I was going to cut them steps out. So uh, I went and got me some 2 by 12s for the runners. And man, I marked them things up and by the time I got through marking on them, I couldn't tell which one was what. <laughs> I went to trying to cut them things out, and I learned about, uh, I guess, uh, them things, was, how much was that piece? Of? That's high when they had about $30 a piece for them old them boards I bought. And after about $60 worth of boards, I decided I'd get Wayne to cut them. <laughs> what are you getting at, preacher? You got to have knowledge. And they, you can get a lot of books on carpentry and I, you know, you can go online and you can learn how to cut steps if you got enough mental capacity to do that. But I'm gonna tell you something. If you wanna learn how to live your life, there's the knowledge you need right there. There's 66 books here. And in those 66 books, you can find something for everything that you need in your life. You say, well, preacher, uh, there's a lot of them that's uh, that was before grace, say back in the law. Let me tell you something. He, Jesus said he didn't come to do away with them books, but he come to fulfill them. And them books are still good today. There's a schoolmaster that leads us to grace. And I'm going to tell you something. That law that was written way back then is still good today. We just need to go by it. But I'm, you know what? The difference is, you know what Christ done? He didn't do away with the law. He just took the penalty out of it. <laughs> He t I don't have to <laughs> I don't have to go and I take a I don't have to take a goat down to Allen and say, Alan, how about cutting this goat's throat for me today? I don't have to go to the priest and ask Amen. him Amen. to pray for me no more. Amen. <laughs> What I do have to do is when I sin and the Holy Ghost of God convicts me, I have to get on my knees and I have to say, Lord, I'm sorry. But you know what? My high priest is sitting right at the right hand of the Father right now. Amen. And my prayer don't have to go through four or five folks, but it goes straight to him. Right. And when I pray to him, then he looks down and if I am sorry for 
of what I've done. Now let me tell you something. Listen to that. There's, there's a lot of folks. Listen to that. There's a lot of folks that'll get down and pray and ain't really sorry for what they done. Amen. They trying to get a little artificial cover. You can't get that. Right. Amen. <laughs> but when you get really sorry about what you done, and the Holy Spirit of God is convicted that the whole heart, and you kneel down in this altar. And you say, Lord, I need forgiveness today. Then he reaches down and he forgives that sin. You know what we're supposed to do then? We're supposed to get up out of that altar and we're supposed to walk in a different direction. Amen. We ain't supposed to go back and do that same sin over Amen. and over and over again. Now, I know that Satan knows our weaknesses. And every one of us has a weakness somewhere in our life. He's not going to come at your strong point. But he's going to come at the weakest point in your life. Every one of you's got one. It may not be the same. To some it's telling a lie. They can't help but tell a lie. To some it's fornication, adultery. There's a lot of different sins out there. And Satan knows where your weakness is. And that's where he's going to attack you. But you've just got to have enough of the grace of God about you to say, no, I failed for that one time, but I ain't going to fall for it again. You caught me there one time, and the Lord forgave me of that you ain't going to catch me there again. You may get me somewhere else down the road, but you ain't going to get me back in that Amen. spot again. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Some of you may not have been whooped like I have. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. When the Lord begins to put that chastening rod right across your back, he begins to chasten you for those things that you've done. You don't forget Remember how when mom and daddy used to whip you? Some of you had mamas and daddies like I did. They believed if, if you spared the rod, you spoiled that child. Yeah. And buddy, when they put a whooping on you, you didn't, you didn't forget it. You remembered. I remember them today. I tell you, every whipping my daddy ever gave me. But you know what? I can also tell you every whipping my, lady, my Lord ever gave me. I remembered them. They were grievous at the time. And he said that. He said that's grievous. Chastisement at the time is grievous. It's not easy. But it's for our own good. You know why? Because it lets us know that we're sons. <laughs> Woo! Let's us know we're children of God because he loved us enough to chasten us when we were wrong. That's right. Amen. And you know where I learned that from? This book right here. There's a lot of things I've learned down this road called life from this book right here. I hadn't always obeyed everything I've learned. But I'll tell you one thing. The knowledge is here of how to build if you want to know. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There's the knowledge of how to build. Do you want to build? Before you can build, the first thing you've got to do is want to build. If you want to build, then all of these things here for you, there's a foundation that you can get on. The cost has already been paid. The knowledge is here. And all you've got to do is come and ask him to save you. If you're backslid, 
You need to man up. You need to woman up. And you need to forget what everybody's going to be thinking and saying about you. And you need to get down here in this altar because it's between you and God. It ain't between you and me. It ain't between you and Adam. It ain't between you and this church. It's between you and God. Amen. And you need to get that thing took care of today. Why, preacher? Because if you don't, there's another whipping coming. Have you not forgot the last one? I'm going to say this and then I'm going to close. I've seen folks trample on the mercies of God. And I've seen them put off and put off and put off until God had to snatch something precious out of their life to get their attention. Don't you do that. God gave you those children. He blessed you with them. But he also gave you a responsibility too. And that responsibility was to raise them godly. Our problem today is we sit around a lot of times with our feelings on our sleeve and somebody flip them off and we run to the house and we swell up and we pout. Next thing you know, and that's all Satan wants. If he can get that opening, I guarantee he's got you right where he wants you because when he takes the joy out of your Christian life, you're backslid whether you want to get it or not. When that joy is gone, you ain't no good to yourself. You ain't no good to your wife or your husband, to your kids, to mom and daddy. You ain't no good to nobody because you ain't got joy in your life. Like I preached about last week, you ain't nothing but a grumbler and a complainer. You sit around and grumble and gripe and complain about everything. And it ain't but one thing it's wrong to start with, you out of the will of God. And that's what makes you a griper and a complainer. The knowledge is right there. Do you know? You if you've been saved. Adam preached the message and I went over and, and listened to it on the internet and he was talking about uh, some of them stay right where they at. They never grow. And that's true. There's a lot of people stay right where they at. They don't never grow. And the reason they don't grow is because they're backslid about half the time. Mm -hmm. God has never saved one of us that he didn't give us something to do. Did you hear that? You have something to do. He Amen. never saved one of us to sit down on a pew and just warm it. Amen. Not one of us. All of us have something. And if we're not doing something for God, we're backing up. And eventually what's going to happen is we're going to get cold, we're going to get indifferent, we're going to get uh, to work. Uh, we hunt excuses not to go to church. If you've been hunting an excuse not to come, you backslid. Amen. Amen. Y'all got quiet on me. If you don't think Satan will give you an excuse, I'm telling you, he will. Won't he, bud? Amen. He'll give you a knot on your head you have to get cut off. Yeah. He'll tell you all. Oh, that old head hurts so much this morning, why don't you just stay at home? And then God said, yeah. It hurt when they drove the nails in my hands and my feet. But it didn't stay home. I went through y'all got them. Amen. Amen. It would have been easy for him to stop when he fell beneath the way to that cross beat beyond recognition couldn't go any further and they had to get somebody to help him to carry that cross on to Golgotha surely it would have been easy for him to stop right there and said I don't feel like going any further but he did for you and for me and if you're back to me shame on you 
You ought to be in the battle. You ought to be out there winning souls. You ought to be out there fighting the battle every day. You ought to have your children fight the battle. You ought to have your mamas and daddies fight the battle. The family ought to fight it together. You ought to be having family prayer time and family devotion. You ought to be telling the children how much God loves them. If you want to build that house in those 66 books, there's knowledge of how to build it. But you've got to get sincere with God. And you've got to show him you want to build it. Now it's up to you. Stand with us if you will. <laughs> Ken, I want you to play a song. First thing I want you to do is I want everybody in here to bow your head, close your eyes, don't look around. <laughs> 